and welcome to another episode of Fubar. In today's episode, we are going to start a new series. In this series, we are going to learn about serverless analytics, and we will start the first video of this series talking about a little bit of introduction on what is this. If you're interested in learning more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every week. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is the first episode in this new series on building serverless analytics pipeline. And I think it's going to be a five episode series. We are going to start this episode with an introduction and then we'll have four uh, videos building an application as always with a demo and things like that. So the idea of this series is to build a full pipeline from the client to the visualization going through all the steps of building a pipeline and all we will do serverless, everything using managed services and everything that we will do, it will not require any code whatsoever from our part. The only thing we will need to code is the client application, but that's it. So in this video, I want to start introducing the series by talking about why you need analytics, why they are so important and why serverless analytics pipeline are a great solution for you. So let's start with the first question, what is analytics and how you can get started with them? Let's go to the slide. So to the question why analytics are important for so many organizations and projects, the answer is that today Data is a very strategic asset for all organizations. Most of the decisions of companies are made through data and analysis of data. We can see here the cover of the Economy magazine in 2017, so it's already three years old and they were already comparing data to oil. Why is that? Because data has been something that it was very expensive to store and now with cloud computing and the increased capability of storage and the decrease of the prices, it has become very easy to store and also very easy to compute and analyze. Before it was very painful to analyze and today there is so many tools in place that we can analyze the data pretty easy. Over the past five, seven years, there are a couple of trends that have taken uh, data to the status that it has today. The first one is the connected device. Means that there's so many data that is generated today from IoT devices, mobile applications are sending data all the time, web applications are sending so many data to analyze. That before it was not something that people were interested in. There was just, oh, a user login and that was it. Today we are recording everything. The user click here or here or there or did that or tap that or whatever. Also, as I said, the storage cost went down with cloud computing and the prices of hard drives and storage is going very down. Then now it's possible to store lots of data with not really a lot of cost. So it's very simple for companies to store data. And again, because of cloud computing, and because compute has become a commodity, then now it's very easy to compute the data that we have been storing and we can do something with it. And it's not just something that it was very inexpensive and impossible to achieve. And because storage was expensive and computing was expensive, data was very out of reach for many. But today, storing petabytes of data is cheap Analyzing petabytes of data in real time is very cheap. Having all this data in place allows business to analyze what their users are doing. And with that, they can really innovate and do things really listening to what the customers are saying about that. For example, I use my analytics in my YouTube channel. I can get really detailed analytics on my YouTube channel where you stop watching, what you watch more, where you're coming from to do my content better and to listen to you. I don't need to ask what is your feedback about this video or that. I can really see it from my analytics. That's the magic of 
data and analytics, you don't need to ask for feedback because you can really see what the users are doing and that's the most realistic feedback that you can ever get. So analytics are very important in order to take decisions for your business, but there's many phases on having a functional analytics pipeline that you can do something about it. There is like four phases that most of the companies fall into. The first phase is like the company has a very simple and centralized login for all the events and they can do some reporting of those events and then they tend to do some manual work for getting those reports out and to understand the business, the reports tend to be manual and they take many days or weeks to be generated. Then the second phase is the companies that has easy and faster ingest of events. So they are able and capable to receive a lot of events, but they still don't have a real time analyzing of those events. So the analyzation and the processing of those events can take many days and that will impact the reporting in a not real time way. The phase number three is about real time analytics. And this is where I think most of the companies fail today. It's having a system where they can ingest data and can see the analytics in real time, almost or near real time uh, in some kind of an, a dashboard and take decisions based on that. And I think this is where I want to end this uh, tutorial for you that you can get to this stage in a simpler way. Building this before serverless was very painful and you need a huge team of people working with you. I will show you a pipeline that you can do only by yourself and it's very scalable. So we will get to phase number three in just five videos. And the last phase is ingesting that uh, analytics and processed events into machine learning, for example, to do analysis on the data and predictions. And this is something I would like to show you in a future videos if you're interested. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see how to send uh, these real time events to machine learning to get forecasts. So this is how a pipeline should look. These are the key parts. We have source of the events, the stream ingestions, the stream storage, the stream processing, and how we can consume these events. Let's look into details in all these different parts. The source part refers to all the events that are coming from some source, either from a client application or from another server that is sending events. For sending analytics events from a client application, we will use some kind of client library. We, will use, we can use AWS SDK, or as I will show you, we will use Amplify. And that's the first video I want to show you. For other services sending information to the analytics services, you can use AWS SDK, AWS API, or even the Kinesis producer library or agents. The second part of this pipeline is the stream ingestion. This is the way that the analytics pipeline will receive the events. We need to have something in the backend side that can consume these events and can scale up if there is a lot of events. If we want to ingest data into our AWS account, we can use some existing services. We can use Kinesis Data Streams and Kinesis Data Firehose. Both are great to load data streams into our data stores. And I will talk more about Kinesis Data Firehose in the following video. But basically with Kinesis Data Streams, you can uh, input and consume data from different places, and then you can send it to be processed in MRR or in your own EC2 instance or in different Lambda functions. And it's great. The Problem for me with uh, Kinesis Data Streams is that it's not a fully serverless uh, service. You will need to define uh, how much load you are getting and define charts, and they are they are running all the time. So I will show you Firehose, and Firehose is a little bit more simple than Kinesis Data Streams and is fully serverless. The third part of our pipeline is the uh, event storage, and we want to store the event somewhere. It needs to be somewhere where we have capacity to store petabytes of data and is quite inexpensive to store. If you're going to use AWS, the most common data lake is Amazon S3. And a data lake is a repository of data stored in raw format. So basically where we are throwing our events. A data lake is usually a single store 
for all the raw data and we can then copy it, some transform data. We will see that later in our example. I will use S3 for the example because it's durability, availability and scalability and also because of the pricing is very cheap to use S3. It has amazing features and is the perfect tool for my example. Then we have the stream processing part. The stream processing is um, something that some companies and most of the companies do in two steps. The first step is the real time stream processing where you do some uh, simple processing to the data, to the raw data, so you can visualize it in real time in some dashboard. And then we have some more complex processing that is done in the uh, in some more complex shops that are not real time. So one way to process the events is executing a Lambda function per event. You can transform each event as it comes in and enrich it if necessary. This is great to build serverless applications, but you will need to scale out the amount of Lambdas depending on how many events you have. And this can be quite crazy if you have petabytes of data coming into your application. Another way to do this is to use an existing service in AWS. We have many, we have AWS Glue. That's the one I will show you in my examples. We also have Amazon Athena. I will show you how to use it. We have Redshift and Kinesis Data Analytics. And if you want me to go into details of those, let me know, but I'm not going to cover those two. And finally, the last bit in our pipeline is the consuming of the events. This means that either we can visualize it in a dashboard or we can pass it to another service to do something else. When I mean to another service, it can be a to machine learning services. For example, we have data coming in and then we process that data and then we can send that data to SageMaker. If we are, I don't know, a company that we are providing mobile services and we want to know if our users will churn, we can create a SageMaker model that will understand the data that is coming in and will predict the churn capacity of our users. So then we can ingest the data, how the users are using our mobile services and based on these machine learning predictions, we know if they churn, of the, if they're churning, then we can call them and offer them a great plan. And that's amazing. For this, we have two kind of options I will be talking here, but you can basically put the data wherever you want. I will talk about QuickSight, but if you would like to see something with SageMaker, let me know in the comments. I will be happy to start exploring SageMaker and show you how you can do some really advanced analytics tweaking and predictions with um, machine learning. So now that we know a little bit more about analytics and what kind of analytics pipelines we have there, then I want to show you the architecture that we are going to build in this uh, series of videos. As I said, we are only using serverless components in the base of pay as you go. So everything here only works and you only pay if you are sending events or storing those events. So this is the analytics pipeline. It might seem very complicated if you have never seen these components, but we can go bit by bit and each of these videos will cover a different bit. The first bit is the source. We are going to use Amplify for our client application to get the analytics events for our source. Then in the second video or in the third video, we will have the ingestions of the events using Kinesis Firehose. In the video number three or two, because this is zero, we are computer scientists and we always start with zero. We are going to talk about also uh, storage and with Firehose, I will be talking about S3 and how we can storage our events. In the next video, we are going to talk about stream processing with Glue. And finally, in the last video, I will be talking about Athena and QuickSight. So that's the pipeline and that's what we are going to build. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you want to know more about serverless analytics, leave me know in the comment box below what you would like to see. And maybe it's coming in the series, maybe it's not. But if not, then I will add it to my backlog as always and start producing that content because I always want to see, make content that you want to watch. Around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you next week with another episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao.